In the 1980s and the 1990s, a new disease struck the cattle herds of the United Kingdom. Thousands were displaying odd behaviours, followed by death in all cases. This threat to the food chain was made even more catastrophic when it eventually became clear that the disease was transmissible to humans. What would become known as Mad Cow's disease led to the destruction of millions of livestock, widespread panic, and the deaths of hundreds from a new lethal disease, a disease with a 100% fatality rate and no known cure. In today's video, we will cover just what Mad Cow's disease actually is, how it spread to both animals and to humans, and how it was eventually brought under control. Mad Cow's disease is more accurately called Bovine Spongiform Encephalopathy, or BSE for short. Spongiform refers to the resulting sponge-like texture of the patient's brain caused by the disease. Encephalopathy refers to a disease that affects the structure of the brain. It is caused by proteins known as prions, a type of protein that can act as a replicating pathogen much like a virus. The prion is malformed, misfolded, and capable of warping other proteins and turning them into harmful prions. Such proteins are commonly found in the brain and nervous system, and so when the disease takes hold, the consequences can be devastating, destroying the very structure of the brain. It is a neurodegenerative disease, with symptoms not immediately apparent. It can take years for the disease to present and incubate. The symptoms of BSE include the cow having trouble walking, tremors, and hypersensitivity to certain stimuli. This can include heightened aggression, nervousness, or a general change in the cow's nature. More sporadic signs include weight loss, grinding of teeth, or a reduction in milk production. Ultimately, the cow will enter into a coma before eventually succumbing to the illness and dying. There is currently no treatment for BSE, meaning it is 100% fatal. For some time, cattle farming was the largest part of British agriculture, representing a third of all total output. A particular breed of dairy cow was used that produced a large amount of milk, so long as it was fed a high-protein diet. The source of this protein would be in the form of meat and bone meal, feed that was derived from rendered animals, a cheaper alternative that actually increased the milk yields further. Dairy cows would provide much of the British beef, and the remains and waste products would be rendered down as part of the process. As for how it came to be, the first known case occurred in September of 1985 in the UK. At the time, it wasn't clear what the disease was but the death of the cow was ultimately attributed to other causes. But by the end of 1986, two more cases had been identified as a new illness. Nevertheless, the state veterinary service's initial response was to impose an embargo on information about the disease being made public. By the end of 1987, BSE was identified as a new disease. One of the initial theories of how the disease came to be is that it was the result of a cross-species transmission. The disease being scrapie. Scrapie is a disease that affects sheep in the same way that BSE affects cows. It was thought that one of the causes could be that the sheep infected with scrapie entered the food supply of the cows through meat and bone meal, or through MBM, a cheaper alternative to feeding cows grain. MBM is the product of the rendering industry, the process of converting waste animal tissues into usable products. Such tissue would include potentially infected nerve tissue from the sheep suffering with scrapie. However, it is more likely that a random mutation in a cow resulted in the harmful prion, which probably occurred in the 1970s. When this patient zero cow was slaughtered, long before any signs of illness presented, the remains were rendered into MBM and fed to other cattle. What followed was exponential infection of cows through the feeding of infected MBM, who in turn would provide infected tissues for the cycle to continue. The actions taken to deal with the spread of the disease were set in 1988 and were largely twofold. The use of MBM feed was banned, and it was advised that cattle be destroyed. This vital step of removing one of the key vectors for infection would result in turning an escalating disease into one that would ultimately peak and then decline. But some farmers continue to use their existing supplies of MBM. And some feed distributors continue to sell the product, 
even well after the five-week grace period, given to allow the industry to adapt. It is thought that in 1988, as many as 10,000 cattle were infected each month. The key concern was whether BSE could be passed to humans. As the initial theory was that the cause of BSE was scrapie, and as scrapie could not be passed to humans, it was thought that there was little to no risk of humans being affected, as confirmed in a report advising the government in 1989. Humans had eaten scrapie-infected sheep for hundreds of years with no issue. Nevertheless, as a precautionary measure, the government in 1989 instituted a specified bovine offal ban. This banned bovile brain, spinal cord, tonsils, spleen, and intestines from entering the human food chain. There was then an effort to improve the hygiene standards of the slaughterhouses. It was noted that around this time, over 60% of slaughterhouses did not meet the single European market standards for safe practice. Some slaughterhouses were recorded with blood-encrusted butchering slabs, rampant cross-contamination, and little in the way of staff training. Through the coming years, the rather reassuring theory about Scrapey would begin to unravel. In 1990, domestic cats began showing signs akin to that of BSE, or Scrapey-like illness. This was attributed to infected tissues being rendered and used by the cat food industry. Soon enough, cases of feline spongiform encephalopathy were found in big cats in zoos. Testing confirmed it was possible for mice to contract BSE, albeit in laboratory conditions. Though it was still thought that humans would need to eat a large amount of infected brain tissue to become infected, but many in the public and media started to panic. If cats could contract BSE by eating infected beef, then why couldn't humans? Some newspapers proclaimed that the disease could be catastrophic to human life, such as The Sun, who published an article claiming that BSE could be as bad as the Black Death. The British government attempted to play down the risk to humans, but evidence was beginning to form that cats could not get scrapey but could get BSE, indicating that it was something very different from the well-understood version that affects sheep. It also perhaps indicated that there was a real risk that the disease could spread to humans. A press release in May of 1990, made by the Minister for Agriculture, John Gummer, stated that it was safe to eat beef. He did qualify this statement, saying that it was safe on the basis that the improvements to how cows were slaughtered, along with the ban on bovine offal, meant there was no risk. In a now much derided public stunt, Gummer and his four-year-old daughter were filmed eating hamburgers to show how safe the meat was. Despite the measures put in place, the infections kept rising in thousands of British herds. Between 1992 and 1993, some 100,000 cases were confirmed, with doubtless many more going undetected. In addition, a complete ban was imposed not only on MBM feed, but also in its use as a fertilizer to avoid any potential cross-contamination. But what had been done was not enough, and had come too late. And in May of 1995, the first victim of a new variant Crutzfeldt Jacob disease, or CJD, was recorded. 19-year-old Stephen Churchill bears the unfortunate moniker of the first person to die from the human version of BSE. He was otherwise a fit and healthy man, looking to join the Royal Air Force. But he started to appear thin, with changes to his mood, and he started to struggle with his studies and walking. Within the next 10 months, he was experiencing hallucinations, required round-the-clock care, and was unable to communicate, before ultimately succumbing to the disease. Variant CJD affected humans in a similar way to how it affected cows. The first signs will be a strange feeling in the hands, feet, and face, akin to a tingling or burning sensation. Motor function will decrease, along with a deterioration in a patient's mental faculties. Often the disease will present itself as psychosis or as dementia. Eventually, the patient will fall into a coma before passing. The disease has no known cure and is 100% fatal, leaving loved ones helpless other than to watch a grueling deterioration. The regular CJD usually affects people over the age of 60. The variant affects people of all ages, including younger people. Whilst it is not 100% clear as to the cause of variant CJD, the first case occurred during the BSE outbreak in the United Kingdom. 
It was therefore linked to eating beef products, though not through muscle meat such as steak or in milk. It is likely that the infected nervous system tissue was consumed through hamburgers or through other heavily processed foods that included rendered bovine offal. Perhaps the most striking example of a death attributed to variant CJD is that of Peter Hall, who died at the age of 20 in 1996. His death was ruled as a misadventure, with the cause of death being attributed to consuming beef burgers before 1990. Peter had been a vegetarian since 1992, showing just how long the disease took to take hold, being years or even decades. This marked the first time that consuming BSE infected foods was linked to the new disease. This was largely taken as controversial, with many people insisting there was little evidence to draw a link. Nevertheless, the hypothesis stuck. In all, 177 people in the UK contracted the variant CJD, all of whom died. It was suspected, though not confirmed, that three of the victims who died were infected through blood transfusions from infected people. As a precaution, blood transfusions from people who had consumed British beef or lived in the country for extended periods of time were barred from donating blood in a number of countries, with potentially infected blood treated as extreme biohazard. Another 50 people around the world contracted the disease, some of whom had lived in the UK, others believed to have eaten exported infected products. None survived the illness. All the while, countless cows were being slaughtered. In order to stop the spread, some 4.4 million cows were destroyed through the entire crisis. But by 1995, cases of BSE were dramatically falling, with that year seeing around 14,000 confirmed cases. By 2000, it was around 1,400 a year, and by 2005, it was down to 225. Many countries, upon seeing the spread of BSE, issued bans on the import of British beef. Some bans lasted years, unwilling to take the chance of exposing their population or livestock to the disease. Today, there are but a handful of cases recorded each year, though with better tracking and awareness of the disease, there is little to no risk from it entering the food chain. The ban on MBM meal for cattle still remains in the United Kingdom. The risk of contracting variant CJD is incredibly low, as it appears to only affect a very small number of people. But, due to the way that prions are not affected by our current medical practices, it remains a terrifying and 100% fatal illness. Combined with the damage that BSE brought upon millions of cows, it is only right that such diseases are treated with caution. A food standards agency was established in the UK to monitor and advise on food safety. Animal byproducts were phased out of products for human consumption, such as medicines. An inquiry into the handling of the situation produced an in-depth analysis, a link to which will be available in the comments. The panic caused by the media and downplaying of the seriousness by the government only led to many people living in fear. Not knowing whether a burger eaten years ago could lead to an early, traumatic death. <laughs>